people who really look at our community, look at what we're doing, look at diversity, look at inclusion, look at how we treat people and say we want to be this kind of company. It's the Stroke of Genius podcast with Aaron Avila, giving survivors a platform to share their stories of defying the odds. Welcome to the debut recording of the Stroke of Genius podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Avila. I am a brain aneurysm and stroke survivor. This man that says my that's been nice enough to premiere my podcast, Jeff Hayes. Now, how you doing, Jeff? I am doing great. Yourself? I'm doing really good. It's really, really an honor to have you here helping me and I am premiering my podcast. Well, I, it's great to be on it. I'm just ticked off. For those that you know are, are listening, can't see you're wearing a cowboy hat. I don't have my hat on right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we, love, we love taking content, repurposing, especially when, when, when both of us are such good eye candy. That yeah, you know, I really appreciate that. <laughs> I really appreciate it. That means a lot. But hey, let me introduce you all to the people because I've got your can answer. You're, you're, uh, I'm going to try my best to read your introduction and then I'm going to give you a stroke survivor version of it. Right. Are you ready, Jeff? I am ready, brother. All right. Jeffrey Aislaw is a prime 10 television host. Of C Suite with Jeffrey Hazelwood, an executive perspective of live on C Suite TV. He associates the award winning All Business with Jeffrey Hazelwood on C Suite Media. Jeffrey Hazelwood is a global business celebrity, Hall of Fame speaker, chairman and founder of the C Suite Network. Home of the world's most trusted network of three sweet leaders and best selling author. His re- most recent book is The Hero Factor How Great Leaders Transform Organizations and Create Their Winning Cultures. And now I'm going to give you an exclusive Talk to the version of what I just read. Jeff is one badass global businessman. Period. Hell down. I mean, really, I do not. You, you, Jeff, we threw on that, that word thought leader. Global thought leader within the C Suite network. But really, bro, you are a global thought leader. You are heading up a global movement it's amazing well thank you you know what i'm gonna have you do my interviews all the time and, and my introductions you do a great job thank you well, yeah, <laughs> you built me up i appreciate yeah, probably, that yeah. yeah probably the first time you you've ever been introduced by somebody that, that sounds like gummer fud it's pretty good <laughs> Actually, you'd be surprised how many people in my life sound like Elmer Fudd, and it's okay. You know, people got to be people, no matter who they are or what or what's uh, you know got them down or got them up. We, we don't care. I don't care. As long as they're people and they're good people and they got good things in their heart, that's all that counts. You've done that really. You know, as people out there may not know, I am a member of your C suite now. Yep. Yeah. And you you you're in your book, Hero Potter, which you'll see right there. Yep, got one here, right? We got one here. I write on all the time. You even got my name on, so no yeah. one will. Uh, yeah, so don't forget who you are. You know, but you know, people over profit yeah. is something you do not hear in the world today, and especially in the influential realm you live in. People over profit. Before we get into your survivor's story, I'm going to ask you, what does that mean to you, people over profit? Well, it means people take advantage of other people. And, and, and what's the key thing is, is that, you know, we've been living in a society where we put people over, you know, our, our profit over people for a long, long time. And it's time for us to reverse that out. And certainly during COVID, that taught us that we really need to be focusing in on the things that are important in our lives. We need to be thinking about how we serve our community, take more of a servant mentality and base it on values. And we found, you know, and that's one of the things I wrote about in the hero uh, factor is those companies that have the hero factor. That's the companies that actually 
gross more money, uh, net more money, have uh, happier employees, customers who are much more engaged and employees much more engaged, vendors who want to do business with them. And when they walk through the community, everybody goes, well, there goes a hero. We find that those businesses that have values that put people over profit who are saying, look, we're going to do the right thing. Let me give a good example. During COVID, it was a tough, tough time for all of us. We all know that. It wasn't easy, but some businesses not only thrive, they, they, they were driving. So they were thriving and driving. We were able to do that as well, but I did it without laying someone off. I did it without, you know, um, taking advantage of certain things. Do we have to cut back? Do we have to do certain things? Absolutely. But we chose that we weren't going to be one of those businesses that was going to leave our people behind. And, and that's just one example. And there were many big business examples of that from all kinds of different businesses and operation and enterprises. And so it's just really saying, look, we're going to be a, we're not going to be assholes. You know, we're going to be real people. We're going to be people who really look at our community, look at what we're doing, look at diversity, look at inclusion, look at how we treat people and say, we want to be this kind of company. You know, Jeff, that really get my mental that personal. How me as a church survivor has anything to do with a global business leader like yourself. And, you know, for those out there listening to this podcast, I when I first had my stroke, I used to lay in bed, half paralyzed, thought my life was over. I was self-employed for 12 years, ran my company. But then I had my stroke, not be half paralyzed, in a wheelchair, lots of speech. I was the goal, I was the money maker of the organization I sold. And I sat there after my stroke, laying there, contemplating, laying in bed, half paralyzed, contemplating, I'm going to get my half paralyzed carcass into the wheelchair, up the ramp. In the class where I kept my 40 spent and was and was gonna kind of blow my hands off. And one day I turned on the YouTube and here you are telling me I need to think big, act bigger, that everything I'm doing, everything I, is attitude. It's on it's and I it, it, your attitude, your business philosophy that you had. I took a flight into my stroke survivor life and it was transforming. And I give kudos and honor to you for really being foundational and being the stroke survivor I am today. So thank you very much. Alex. Well, brother, you know, that's what we all need to do. And my hat's off to you too. Good look at what you're doing and how you're doing it. Every day you motivate and inspire people. I remember your first outreach to me on LinkedIn. I, I remember that day. And what you said to me, and you told me that you were in a down spot. And I said, brother, you know, put put your boots on, get your big boy panties on. Let's go get back in the game. I mean, there, there are a lot of entrepreneurs. There are a lot of soldiers, a lot of people who are contemplating a lot of great things. Don't forget why you're in this game and who you're supposed to be. And you remember the people around you and how you can provide motivation, inspiration, education, and even monetization, you know, that we can do every single day. We all have a purpose here and, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. And so you just need to find that purpose. And some days, let me tell you, man, <laughs> I've had some tough days in my life and career and, and certainly haven't been affected as you have with uh, your, your ailment, particular thing that's, that's affected your life. And, you know, by the God, grace of God. But there are other things. I mean, I've been struck by lightning. You know, uh, I've had someone shoot. I've been shot before. I mean, there, you know, there's other things. Most people don't even know that. And, and yet all of these things, I don't, I don't let them get me down. I've been, I've been, I've had people steal money from me. I've had business that cancels on me. I've had people who've cheated me. I've had people who've lied to me. We have all had that stuff, right? Well, or not all of it, but we've had some stuff that affects us in every way. And, and by the way, COVID was a great example of that. COVID hit us on March the 13th of, of last year. And everybody was like, oh, my gosh, what are we going to do? They got to shut down. We can't have this. We can't do this. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I said, look, we're not going to go sit on the couch and eat bonbons. You know, most business people, our jobs are to be the most strategic people in the room and to be the leaders. And to be a leader, you got to get off the damn couch. You got to get off the wheelchair. You got to get off all the point things because people are counting on us. And our job is to be business first responders. I said, look, we're not just going to survive this stuff. 
but we're going to drive and we're going to thrive. And you're a, you're a great example of that, Aaron. <laughs> well, I have to say, Jeff, you're the leader of the band. You're the leader of the band. I, I mean, this is the epitome of them. I want people to know your survival and being shot where they did it. I know that you have been you were struck by lightning and light. I wanted people to hear that part about you because I think a lot of people, I, I remember about hours and hours of your content and I heard you mention that in passing in one of your keynotes or any, uh, some sort of video. But tell us about it. Your survival of being struck by lightning. Well, you know, I always tell everybody I used to be a magnetic personality. Now I'm electrifying. <laughs> well, yeah. Right? Well, yeah. I, you know, I was sitting at home and we were at a, some really bad weather in our home. This was a home we lived in. I don't know. Uh, this is, it was in April of 2001. And uh, my wife, uh, it was a torrential rain, and my wife was complaining that there was water in the basement. I said, what do you mean water in the basement? We never have water in the basement. So I walked down there barefoot, you know, in a pair of shorts. That's what I do. As soon as I get home, by the way, maybe this is too much information, but as soon as I get home, no matter where I'm at, whether it's my apartment in New York or my ranch in South Dakota or, or a hotel room, the first thing I do is is take off whatever I'm wearing and put on a pair of shorts and a T-shirt. And, I, and most people know that know me real well. I walk around like that all the time. In fact, you know, I, I, by the way, just one time I remember somebody was robbing our outside of our house, getting into our cars. And I ran out in my underwear with a gun and it got detailed in, in, a, in a big magazine story about how I hunted these guys down in the snow on during Thanksgiving. Gosh, about the same amount, same time. time for, it's a true story. Absolutely true story. It, who was it that wrote it? Wired Magazine wrote a big article. And they, they chronologued my, my tweets because I was tweeting kind of almost in real time, too, because I'm chasing these kids down who had broken in to our cars and, and broken into a bunch of other cars. And they ended up having guns. And I held them at gunpoint uh, at, at one point in my, <laughs> until the police showed up. And, of course, the police that showed up, I was their godparents for their <laughs> for their kids. So it was like it was great. Hey, Eric, you got it from here. Good. See, I'm going in because I was literally in my underwear in a T-shirt, uh, barefoot, in the snow with a gun. But anyway, side note. And, you know, so here I was in shorts and a T-shirt. I ran downstairs, and my gosh, there was water uh, in our basement. We we had this big, huge brick wall. It was a big house, about 7,500 square feet, something like that. And so there was all this torrential rain that was flushing down the side of this big brick wall. And evidently, I had a vent out on the first floor that was just pulled out a little bit, and the flashing wasn't quite... Uh, done on that on that vent and so the water was dripping through and I reached up to touch where that vent was dripping and I'm standing in this little puddle of water in our basement and right when I reached up is my this hand when I reached up to touch that vent the lightning struck the house and then came through that vent came downstairs came through my hand in fact all of this today is still numb all of this is numb and uh, I'm still living some pain with it and everything else. And it causes some weird things in my body from time to time. At least that's what I blame it on. None the, nonetheless, uh, but I get different kinds of sensations and so forth. But, um, you know, it, but yeah. And I remember I woke up um, and my neighbor who was a pathologist at the time, my neighbor was a pathologist and he was my neighbor at the time. And he had been driving by when the house got struck. So he stopped ran in the house and of course was down in the basement as I'm waking up. And of course you got to think about something when you're waking up and you've got a pathologist undressing you to check for exit wounds. You know, you, you, it's scary when you see a pathologist is that you know, I, I always thought, I thought it was having an outer body experience, but I remember my wife yelling down to me because I couldn't hear, or I couldn't see when it hit me. It's like a white flash and, and, and just seizes you up. So I was seized up and I fell over onto the floor and my wife, when I was when I finally came to was yelling, do I need to call a doctor? Do I need to call a doctor? And uh, of course, yeah. Well, yeah, I got struck by lightning. You probably should call a doctor. So, Oh, my gosh. I cannot believe that. So right here on the Stroke of Genius podcast, you've just heard about Jeff Hazel being struck by lightning. I, like you say, I always use your word, larger line. Now I know why. Yeah. Well, 
I tell you, I've come close a couple of times, of course, living on the prairie in South Dakota, you know, you're out. And by the way, I encourage everybody to be very careful when it comes to lightning. If you can hear thunder, you're, it's already too late. And uh, lightning can strike you from as far away as 20, 25 miles. So whenever I know there's bad weather coming and lightning's coming, I'm in the house, even though I'm in the house. I, you stay off the phone and stay away from water. You remember that? My mom always told yeah, you, do, don't yeah. take a bath. Don't take a bath. They're in a bad storm. That was one. And uh, two, don't talk on the telephone. Uh, uh, because when lightning hits a house, it'll fry every, every single um, finely tuned electronic device in your house. Like we had that. And of course, our house, you know, um, it, it tore down the bricks. It it took a, a, a cornerstone at the top of the house, which was this big, you know, keystone out of the top of the window and blew that two weeks, two, two, blo- we found it two blocks away. And, um, you know, it did damage and smoke and tore out. All, the windows were shoved out of the window. I mean, a massive window. Um, yeah. was, was lodged in on the other side. Nails came out of one wall, ended up in the other. So glad, you know, but by the grace of God, had Tammy not called me to come downstairs, I would have been in that room. And uh, that, that's a unique story. I don't think I've ever told that before, but yeah, I would have been in that room at the time that lightning hit had she not said, come down and check on this. So it was very interesting. Well, I really thank you so much for sharing that. But you mentioned just to take a, a survival story I did not know about. You but shot, bro. Yeah, I was out hunting. I was out hunting with some folks, and somebody took a mis- misappropriated shot, um, shot me across the chest. I got it in the face. I'm still carrying some some pellets in my face. Uh, I can't get MRIs in my head because that'll move the pellets, and um, you know things like that. It was steel shot, unfortunately. And by the way, that was just days before I was a judge on Celebrity Apprentice, so we had to use a lot of makeup you know, to cover up where I was shot on the face, at least. I took it. Luckily, I was wearing a lot of vest and stuff. I didn't take too many pellets in here, uh, but it was it was close enough to knock me down and wow. uh, and and draw blood everywhere as, as well. Um, but, yeah, uh, just kind of unique, unique, unique situation. Something. So you want to always be careful, you know, certainly with firearms. I'm, you know, I'm a avid uh, 2A uh, supporter. I'm a huge sportsman. Uh, love hunting, love fishing, love everything outdoors, uh, love our Constitution, and um, love and my favorite two amendments are the First and Second Amendment, but they're all my favorites. But those two in particular are ones that I think have made this country strong. And so, that you know, you, but I really do uh, practice good firearm safety, and it's important for you to know the people that are around you are doing the same thing. So that's just uh, one of those other pieces that you're, you're always uh, – so I'm always very, very um, – more aware of the people that I go hunting with sometimes. Yeah, I don't. I think the whoever shot you probably should take another course of firearm safety. Yeah, well, you know that'll happen sometimes. Their accidents are accidents, right? And uh, but sometimes people get a little too um, anxious or a little too wanting to shoot shoot that flying bird or shooting that deer or shooting whatever it is. And you see those from time to time. I know every year, you know, here in South Dakota, they publish the those accident reports and. And usually there's a death or two each year around the, around the, you know, there's a, there, you see that from people who accidental discharge of a gun um, or they inadvertently think that shadow is a, is an animal that they're harvesting and they shoot it and find out it's their dad or their uncle or their son. And, and you have to be very, very careful, you know? Yeah. Um, I, yeah there. I, I, you know, I think I, I don't worry too much being what you're bound, but uh, now, but let's take a minute and take a commercial break. Show me a lot. I like commercials. All right. We're back now. I, I'm used to all I had to, I had that out, I have to say. No, it was good. What's wrong with it? Go with these things, man. No, I like to I make it natural. Make done. it natural. You're doing this a great job. The first time I fucking did this job. I do, I, 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 to make you, you're my, you're my, you're. Hey, Aaron, I've been doing this for years. And, you know, there's some of us that do have a knack for it and uh, do do well, you know, mostly because I like, just like you, I like to have good conversations. By having good conversations, that makes for great content. Great content makes for great 
great learning, knowledge, education, motivation, inspiration, as I mentioned, and sometimes a great deal of monetization, depending on how you can do it. You know, and using content right now is the key for that. So you just keep pushing. And that's the key is just be yourself. And everybody that's in the media or trying to build a brand using content, that's one of the things you want to be is to be authentic, be yourself, be who you are, because it's too tough being who you are anyway. Why would you want to be somebody else? Right. But but that's what people are looking for. You know, for a lot of years, for many, many years, you know, brands could hide behind advertising. They could hide behind slick campaigns. They could hide behind a lot of different things, 800 numbers. And I don't know what sadistic bastard in, in, you know invented that. But, you know, with telephone trees, push one for this, two for this. Well, we're finding that most people don't want that anymore. They want direct, authentic communication. They want direct, authentic content. They want direct, authentic connection. And um, and they're speaking with their their money. They're speaking with their eyeballs. They're speaking with their hearts. They're speaking with their ears in terms of listening and, and, you know, and consuming and getting around the brands that they want. You know, brands, nothing but a promise delivered. And it's up to for all of us, you, me, to be authentic and deliver that brand promise of who we are. Yeah. You know, when you say the word authentic, one of the things I can go back 11 years and remember what you said, because it was right when you published Think Big, Act Bigger. And you asked, do you want to, on a video, of course, I didn't know you then. But you asked, do you want to be the most powerful person you could be? Be authentic. Be yourself. I went, oh, my gosh, I could be that. Well, we all can. We all can. I mean, listen, the people that I respect the most, you know, quite frankly, are the are those folks who are authentic. It's the gardener who, you know, does the best job, who is who he is. It's the janitor who, who cleans the toilets and does the best job and makes sure it's the best. It, it's the CEOs. It's the CFOs that, that, that live values and say, no, this is I love people like that. I mean, I love people who are you know, or, you know, give something up. Are you willing to sacrifice, you know, to be who you are? I mean, I've had opportunities for business. People come to me and say, hey, Jeff, we want you to do this. No, I don't want to do that. And they go, why? That Well, one, that's not me. Or two, I don't like you, you know, whatever it is, you, yeah. know? you know, and that's okay too. You know, it, you know, it's just like, I'm, I won't, you know, like, I'm, listen, if you want to smoke, smoke, but I'm, it's not my thing. Uh, you want to, you know, you want to drink, uh, a, a rosé wine, drink a rosé wine. I'm not drinking one. You know, uh, you be who you are and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it, you know, some people say, oh, you got to be more vegan. Well, I eat the things that eat vegan. So it's like, <laughs> you know, so it's like, you know no. be who you are. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with it. By the way, there's no reason why we can't, can't have differing opinions. You know, you, you participate a lot in our Scotch Sunday nights where we do a lot. We talk about every taboo product or our, our topic that there is sex, religion, politics, you name it. We talk about it. And it's not for us to change people's mind. My job isn't to change your mind. My job is just to understand you a little bit better and you to understand me a little bit better. And you can believe whatever you want to believe. As a human being, we're empowered with that belief. If you want to be stupid, if you want to be smart, if you want to be dull, if you want to be interesting, you can be whatever you want to be. And my job isn't to change you. You know, my job isn't to to judge you. My job is just to understand you. And that's, I think, one of the most important things we have to remember in this world today, that, you know, we, we got to quit being a polarizing people. But polarizing people put us at odds. I don't want to be at odds with people. I want to understand what they're doing. I want to understand why you believe what you are. And by the way, you can, it could be, you can oppose me about the Second Amendment. You can oppose me about the First Amendment. You might, you know, I have friends of mine who are adamant right to the right of Attila the Hun Yet when they and I'm in, by the way, I believe in the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. I believe in your right to burn the flag. I don't like it, but I will defend your right because I think it makes us stronger as a nation. It makes us stronger as a country. If you want to put a take a knee on the side of the field, you're you're welcome to do that. Doesn't mean there's not a consequence because of it. Okay, it. But at the same time, you are entitled. You have a right to do that. All right. Now, there, again, there are consequences of your actions and all actions, no matter what we do, good, bad, evil, whatever they might be, or great, you know, there are always consequences of those actions. And I'm I'm okay with that. I think that's cool, you know. 
I think that's really, really awesome. And I really do. I think it's, I think God's, we all should be being authentic is part of what the journey I've been on for last. Because you taught, you said you want to be the most powerful person you can be. I can know no other service life would like me. And a lot of it is foundational that I, you said to be authentic. And to be authentic, I realized after a day, years plus of this journey, that you have to face some maybe not so pretty things in your life to be authentic. Yeah. And you have to learn from your mistakes. And I think everybody in the world can learn from that. Same thing. And, and the them. other thing is not just surround yourself with people who are always going to tell you the same things or the same th things you believe. I mean, you know, Penn Jillette, who I met on, uh, we actually met, we actually met before I was on Celebrity Apprentice, I believe. We were on stage together at some event speaking in Las Vegas and we just had a repartee and started having a great conversation. And then, of course, I was a judge on Celebrity Apprentice. He was on Celebrity Apprentice. We got to know each other. Listen, he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. Well, I believe in God. When we have great conversations, not just about that, but about all kinds of things. It, why would I want to have friends who don't, who always want to be the same way or business associates or people who work with me who, who believe are always saying yes to me? Yes, yes, yes. No, I want people who stand their ground. I, you know, I got Trisha Ben, who's our chief operating officer or chief community officer. And, you know, someone says, well, how can you take an opposite stand with Jeff? Can you get by with that? And she goes, he loves that. You know, because then you're you're standing up toe for toe. We're going blow to blow. You know, just like with Penn Jillette. Sometimes at the end of the conversation, I said, thank God you just said that. And he goes, stop doing that. You know, I just do it to, you know, to have fun with him and say, thank God, when he doesn't believe in God. You know, it's fun to do that kind of stuff. I think it's just a blast to, to cause tension, to cause healthy debate, uh, to cause us to move to a different place than what we are today. I mean, you know, Aaron, you know, like, you know, this is a, as a stroke survivor. There are many people who kind of sh shun away from you because they're afraid to have a conversation with you. They're, they're afraid to, to, to do what, you know, to act correctly. Or let's say during Black Lives Matter, a lot of white people went and hid in the closet for a while because they didn't want to have the conversations because they were uncomfortable conversations. But we have to be willing to take risk. We have to be willing to make mistakes. We have to be willing to put, you know, to have that thing and do those things so that we know that we won't make those mistakes later on or better knowledge of how we be able to do it. So, you know, for me, I run into those situations. I don't run away from them. Well, I, you know, what a plethora. Now, I want everybody to re-listen this several times because Jeff, Jeff took to it about 12 Plus gold nuggets. You need to listen, Jeff. I'm trying to keep that podcast, I think, down to 30 minutes. All right. I'm going to let you go. And I really appreciate it, being. I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you for being what you, uh, who you are and what you're doing to help so many other stroke uh, survivors. And that's what we want to use, survivors. Folks that have come through the other end, you're going to get, you're going to get better. It's going to get better. Just like we, you know, we do in business every day. Uh, you're doing it in your personal lives uh, every single day. So you keep up, keep being an inspiration, keep being motivation for all these great people who have a much better life ahead of them. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate Jeff. Well, Jeff, thank you again for being here on the Stroke of Genius podcast. Thank you. Like what you just heard, visit c-suiteradio.com. C-Suite Radio, turning the volume up on business.